If weight loss was only about calories in versus calories out, then we would all be skinny. We would just not eat or eat very little until we reached our weight loss goal. As we know, millions of people have actually tried that and many times they end up not actually losing any weight, but they end up gaining weight. How can it be that we eat very few calories, but end up gaining weight? Well, more and more scientists are discovering that it's because of a hormone called leptin. When our bodies stop responding to this hormone, we end up with what's called leptin resistance. This is now suspected to be the primary cause of people gaining fat and becoming heavier. This video goes into detail regarding leptin and what you need to know and how a person can reverse leptin resistance. Leptin, what some call the master fat burning hormone, believe it or not, is a hormone that is produced by the body's fat cells. So this is five pounds of fat right here and fat actually produces the hormone leptin. When it's working properly, it tells your brain that you have enough stored fat. Your brain then knows that you don't have to eat more calories and you can burn more calories at a normal rate without trying to store more calories as fat. This is why leptin sometimes gets the nickname starvation hormone or hunger hormone. Leptin communicates with an area of the brain called the hypothalamus. Leptin's primary role is to report to the hypothalamus how much fat is stored in the body and if the body is receiving enough calories to maintain a healthy weight. Essentially, it keeps us from starving, which it's very good at, but there's a communication error that tends to occur with the hypothalamus when it comes to overeating. Here's how leptin communicates with the brain. Like I mentioned in the beginning, leptin is created by the body's fat cells, and the more body fat someone carries, the more leptin that is produced. The leptin once produced is carried via the bloodstream to the brain, where it targets the hypothalamus. This is the part of the brain that dictates how much you eat and when you are hungry. When this communication highway is working properly, the higher levels of leptin tell the hypothalamus that we have plenty of stored fat and the brain doesn't send out the signal to eat. When the body has low levels of stored fat, leptin tells the brain that we need to eat more calories. This form of communication is commonly known as a negative feedback loop. What I mean by this is when body fat levels increase, then leptin levels go up since fat produces leptin. The body then eats less calories and burns more fat to regulate that stored fat. Now when you lose body fat or it decreases, this leptin level drops, which then signals the brain to eat more calories and to burn less calories so that it can serve fat stores. So what is leptin resistance? As we know, if you're overweight or obese, you have plenty of stored fat, which means the level of leptin is higher. Given how the communication pathway is supposed to work, the brain should receive the leptin signal to start eating fewer calories. Even though there are high levels of leptin, the signaling and communication pathway becomes broken and the brain doesn't get the message. This is known as leptin resistance, and scientists now believe this is to be one of the primary contributors to so many people being overweight and obese. When the brain doesn't receive the leptin signal, it thinks that the body is starving, so it sends out the signal to eat more calories. Even though the body has plenty of stored fat, the hypothalamus job is to make sure the body survives, so it increases appetite and hunger. It also forces the brain to conserve energy and burn fewer calories. Now the body has created an environment to build even more fat stores, even when it doesn't need it. For those that struggle with leptin resistance, thinking that they're going to overcome the brain's hunger signal, it's a futile attempt. For those that believe they have leptin resistance, you know how strong that hunger signal is and why so many struggle with controlling their appetite. This could also be why so many people yo-yo diet and, you know, long-term weight loss doesn't ever seem to have happened, right? Yes, we can eat properly and restrict enough calories to lose some excess fat, but the brain still isn't getting the signal, so it increases the appetite, it decreases the amount of calories burned or it slows down your metabolism, and it works to store more fat. So what causes leptin resistance? There are a few reasons to what scientists believe cause leptin resistance. Having fat floating around in the bloodstream, which can happen when you are obese or significantly overweight, may be a cause. This can cause an increase in fat metabolites in the brain and possibly interfere with leptin signaling with the brain. The most likely cause of leptin resistance is inflammation though. When you carry too much fat, like I'd mentioned earlier that the fat cells become inflamed and what some call sick. This elevated inflammation level then also occurs in the brain and hypothalamus. Scientists believe this is an important cause to leptin resistance. Inflammation can dull the brain's leptin receptor sites and this causes a signaling issue, which then triggers resistance. One study reporting that when someone has higher inflammation levels, 
They also have elevated levels of C-reactive protein molecules, and this can inhibit leptin's role in controlling appetite. It can shut down the brain leptin communication pathway by binding to leptin. When this happens, it becomes nearly impossible for leptin to cross the blood-brain barrier and reach the hypothalamus. Unfortunately, this can put someone into a cycle where they gain more weight, create more inflammation, which then causes more resistance with the brain and leptin communication pathway. So how do you reverse leptin resistance? Science is still evolving in research in how to reverse leptin resistance, but eating an inflammation reducing diet seems to be the front runner, along with consuming nutrients that help improve the brain leptin communication pathway. Some changes you can make to adopt an inflammation reducing diet are avoid processed foods, eat more soluble fiber, lower your triglyceride levels, eat more protein, and take supplements that contain specific ingredients such as leptocor. This nutrient has been shown to improve C-reactive protein levels, which can inhibit leptin's role in controlling appetite, and CRP may bind to leptin, which prevents it from crossing that blood-brain barrier and reaching the brain. In summary, if you are struggling to lose weight or seem to be dumbfounded as to why the scale won't budge, leptin resistance could be the reason why. Implement the strategies that I just mentioned, especially the inflammation-reducing diet and specific nutrients that help lower CRP levels, such as the leptocor, that can cause leptin signal from reaching the brain. This is the best way to regulating leptin and reversing leptin resistance. To learn more about how specific nutrients like this can help lower CRP levels and improve the communication between the brain and leptin, go ahead and click the link in this video or below in the post.